I waited my whole life to be the man of the hour. I really can't lie, I was the man when I started. I'll be the man when I die. Man, these hoes take your money. And I take that. Hey, what's up, guys? How we doing? Today, I want to talk about identifying and knowing your strengths and your weaknesses as a player so that you can put extra time during your practice sessions working on your weaknesses so that they can become your strengths, but also to keep working on those strengths to make sure that those skills don't diminish at all. And that's how you really become a complete player. So I get asked all the time from players of all different levels, what do I have to do to get to that next level? If it's a high school player, they're asking, what do I need to do to be a good college player or, or get drafted, be a good professional player, or make it to the major leagues, whatever it might be. As you go up the ladder in baseball, what you'll notice, obviously, is that players have less weaknesses the more they go up in levels. When you get to the major leagues, skill level is pretty similar across the board. Now, you have your all-stars, your guys that are just amazing players, and they have almost no weaknesses. But in general, most players don't have any glaring weaknesses. If they do, they're going to have a hard time staying at that major league level. I think the big thing to take away from this is if you're at a younger level, if you're in Little League or if you're in high school, you can have some weaknesses and still be successful. But the more weaknesses you have or the more glaring weaknesses you have, it's going to be tougher to continue to move up the ladder because sooner or later, your opposition is going to be able to expose those weaknesses. So. If you, let's just say for an example, you're a pitcher and you have a great fastball, well, you might be able to get away with that at lower levels, whatever level that is. It might be high school, it might be college, depending on how good your fastball is. But sooner or later, if you don't work on your secondary pitches, if you don't have something to go along with that fastball, well, then you're not going to be able to continue to develop. And you might not be able to move up to that next level. What I see a lot of times is, Players have a certain skill or tool when they're younger and they're very, very successful, but they don't work on the other parts of their game. They just rely on that single ability and maybe that allowed them to be a great Little League player and then a great Babe Ruth player and even a great high school player, but then all of a sudden they get to the college level and they don't develop that secondary skill or third skill or fourth skill, whatever it might be, and all of a sudden they stop developing and they can't get any further and they wonder, well, what's going on here? I was a great player at a younger level. I, why can't I keep moving up? It all comes down to your weaknesses. There's going to be something that's not going to allow you to play at that higher level. And that's why it's so important, especially at a young age, but throughout our development as a baseball player to recognize what we do well and what we don't do well. And then we really need to put time into making those weaknesses our strengths so that we can continue to move up the ladder in baseball. Now one thing I see a lot of when I'm either running camps or working with players in lessons or just walking around indoor facilities and watching players work is that guys are afraid to work on their weaknesses because they don't want to fail. They don't want to look bad. It's not always fun if you have a a weakness. Let's go back to that pitcher again. Let's say he has a great fastball, but he doesn't have a breaking ball and he has no feel for a changeup. Well, it's not fun for you as a player to, to work on a changeup if you don't have one and bounce a bunch of them in there or, or throw them wild. And now we want to just go back to our fastball. Let's, let's, that makes me feel comfortable. Let's just go back to that fastball and really throw it in there and feel good about ourselves. That's what I see with a lot of players. Also, what I'll see is if, if people are around, if you're, if you're working out, let's say you're working out with some friends or there's people around in the, in the facility or the field watching you, a lot of times players don't want to do that thing that they don't feel comfortable with because they don't want to fail in front of other people. So again, with that guy with his fastball, let's say he has a great fastball and when he throws it, people around him take notice or his friends and buddies say, wow, you know, this guy's got a great fastball. He's an awesome player. He's afraid sometimes to throw that breaking ball, that changeup, because let's say he bounces a few in there or throws them wild. Well, now people start looking and saying, man, he's, he doesn't have an off-speed pitch. That's, that's pretty bad. So they're afraid to fail in, not only to themselves but in front of other people, and that keeps them from working on their game. And what's going to happen is you're going to come to that point, like I said earlier, where you know that one strength that you have or that few strengths that you have isn't going to be enough to keep letting you climb up that ladder 
and your weaknesses are going to become more and more glaring. And now all of a sudden we can't continue to develop as a player. So the biggest thing is you have to first know your strengths and your weaknesses, and then you have to work on them. It doesn't matter who's around. It doesn't matter that you know you don't want to see yourself fail. You have to work on these things or else you're not going to be able to continue to develop. Put your pride aside. A lot of times what coaches will tell us is, is just take your pride and put it in your back pocket for a little bit. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about looking bad when you're practicing. You're going to need to fail in order to get that repetition in so that it's going to become easier and easier and easier. And before you know it, it might be a few weeks, a few months, or maybe even a few years. But your weaknesses are going to start to turn into your strengths. And that's how you really become a complete ball player. And that's how you're going to keep climbing up the ladder. That's the biggest thing is turning those weaknesses into strengths and keeping your strengths as your strengths. And that's how you, you really become a great ball player. So I hope this helps out a little bit. Let me know what you think. Give it a try and I uh, hope it helps. Take care.